Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today, folks, on this Tuesday, September 5th, 2023. It's about 3.22 p.m. Eastern Time as I'm speaking and recording. Praying you guys are having an amazing day. Again, continued praises for each and every one of you to join me today, or whenever you join me, guys. You're getting this video in, getting some scriptures in you. Total success. Total success. Even if somebody doesn't watch one of these videos, absolute success. God still gets the glory and praise because at least one. He left the 99 to go after that one, God. And I know it's more than just me to get something from these videos. But me personally, and I've, I've encouraged you guys to make this relationship extremely personal. Be selfish with God. I mean, be selfish with him. Yes, I understand we want to share the love of Christ and all of that, but God, make it so intimate. God, God is a jealous God. He wants all of you because he gave his best for you, so we need to give him all. We need to give him all of us. Amen. But guys, I'm praying that God is going to tame my tongue on this one because I just got back from the gym. Things didn't get heated up, but uh, just talking with one of my dear sisters down there, love her to death. She's a believer, and she truly believes that God I don't want to say he chooses or allows certain people to be sick, you know, and guys, I understand something. So there are many believers, many Christians, many believers in Christ that, that will go to heaven early. They will go there with a sickness or disease, heart attack, things like it. Guys, I'm not denying those things. I'm saying for me, I'm walking in absolute belief and faith in God's word, that sickness and disease, poverty, all these things are a curse of the law. And Jesus came to fulfill the law. And if we understand that, guys, I absolutely believe no matter what the doctors say you have, if you put your faith, absolute, total, unwavered faith in the word of God, whatever the doctor says is in you, it's got to go. You got to speak to it. and It's got to go. Again, guys, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, one body, many parts, many functions, guys. And that is, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying she's right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm not saying she's wrong. Same body, just different level. I won't say different levels of faith, just different aspects of our, our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. But today's title, True Prosperity, True Prosperity. Anybody following me knows I'm taking these online classes. The second course was called Biblical Prosperity, folks. There is so much, so much in the word of God about prosperity. And it talks about financial prosperity. It talks about physical prosperity, spiritual prosperity. There are so many different aspects of prosperity. But we're going to see what our author has to say about today and stick with that. This isn't about Todd's opinion today. Amen. I heard somebody say that. <laughs> um, so true prosperity. Our st uh, studies today, guys, is Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. One of the first accounts of Jesus and the disciples catching all of them fishes. Uh, and our lead off verse is Luke 5, chat, uh, verse 8, where the God says this. When Simon Peter saw this, this is when he saw the nets just overwhelmed with fish. Guys, please read the studies. When Simon saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. That's, that's, that's instant, immediate repentance right there. Amen. Dennis DeHaan, this is his take on prosperity today, folks. Imagine having a financial advisor whose stock market predictions were 100% accurate. Wall Street would soon put you on easy street. Or, or suppose your livelihood was fishing and you had a friend who could always lead you to just the right spot at just the right time. Every day, you could have a money-making catch. Hey, that's what the disciples did, man. Their nets were bursting. Guess what they did? They left the fish air. They left the fish there. I think they left them with uh, Zebedee, with, uh, the father of James and John, the father of Jesus Christ. Guys, understand these were fishermen. That is their livelihood. They caught more than who knows. I'm sure theologians got it broken down how much they caught a year's salary, five years out, whatever, guys. It didn't matter to them. They left it all to follow Jesus Christ. What are we willing to give up to follow Jesus Christ? That's true prosperity. Um. Every day, okay. I wonder, did the appeal of such prosperity flash across the minds of the four seasoned fishermen who took Jesus' advice? After working all night with no success, they let down their nets at his command, and the catch nearly sank two boats. It's a lot of fish. Many people today, man, God just speaks to me, God. Think about that. And then think about what Jesus did with those two fish and the, the multitudes of the 5,000 plus. We got 
Here's four fishermen with nets enough to definitely feed those 5,000 and their families for quite a while. Jesus did it with two fish. Let that speak. Many people today seem to be drawn to Jesus by those be drawn to Jesus by those who proclaim that God wants them healthy and wealthy. He does. God, I'm going to say right there, and our author is going to go against that. And the lady Jim comment, guys, for you to think God wants you to live in poverty and sickness, you please crack the Bible back open. I wrote it down, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Jesus put an end to the curse of the law. The curse of the law includes poverty and sickness, guys. Please, this is not my interpretation. This is not my opinion. This is the word of God. And we as believers, as Christians, we got to understand that's the truth. That is not being greedy. That's not being selfish. That's not being prideful. That is believing that our daddy loves us that much. He wants us to walk in health and prosperity. Guys, God doesn't need money, but man, he can definitely use it through us to expand the kingdom. Lots of things that I want to do. It, it costs finances, and I cannot do it if I'm laid up in bed sick either, God. Don't let Satan tell you that God chooses for some people to be sick. Get out of the Old Testament. Get out of the book of Job. That was before Christ. That was that was a story in there given to us so God can make his glory revealed. Prove to Satan. This guy's not going to, he's not going to stray away from me. We got to understand this stuff, guys. But the main thing, know that Jesus Christ put an end to the curse of the law, which again, includes poverty and sickness. Put an end to it, guys. An end. Poverty and sickness has got to go because of what Jesus did. Whew. Calm down, Todd. Praise God. All right. Without question, Jesus showed concern for the sick and the poor. Didn't beg them, didn't chase them, guys. Then say, well, hang out for a little bit. Let's sit here and panhandle and get some money, see what can happen. Or and the sick, you want to be made well? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, then you're well. Your faith, your faith has made you well. He didn't say, now nah, you know what? I'm gonna let you sit here and be sick for just a couple more days. Jesus didn't do that. He didn't do that. Um, it is not wrong to make health and material needs the objects of our prayers, for our heavenly father cares deeply about us. But his greatest concern and delight is not to fill our nets with fish. He wants to fill our hearts with his love so we will become fishers of men. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Profits you zero. Or what is a man willing to give to gain his soul? What are you willing to give to Christ? Are you willing to give Christ your all to, to be guaranteed that eternity in heaven? Or are you still worried about laying up treasures where moth and rust can destroy and decay, and where, and where rust and, and, or, uh, and where thieves can break in and steal. We got to ask ourselves these things, guys. He wants to fill our hearts with his love. So we can, okay. And he can do that only when we recognize, as Peter did, how spiritually needy we are. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness. Guys, I believe that's in Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. They shall be filled. Amen. The richest people are those who have experienced the love of Christ and want to share it with others. That's abundant prosperity, guys. Every single one of us should have so much of the love in Christ with us that we can't help but wanting to share it with others. It'd be like, let's just go ahead and call it. Okay, let me just finish here. That's true prosperity, exclamation point. Thank you, Dennis DeHaan. And our quote today, no one is so poor as he who has nothing but money. Amen. What's the verse? It's easier for a camel to fit through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. God, there is so much in there. Uh, money, money is the root of all kinds of evils. Money itself is not evil. Money itself is not sin. The love of money is. And God, there's such a fine line. You've heard me say, I'm praying for a financial abundance because I want to go out like our background. You plant. There's so much scriptures, guys. What you plant, you reap, you sow. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, not my opinion, guys. Again, the word of God. And if we get your mindset and your heart set to that and line it up and just start agreeing and praying on those scriptures and those words, God gives you. So, guys, I, doing this video, I looked up and I found so many scriptures that support that there's nothing wrong with financial prosperity. And there's nothing wrong with physical prosperity. There's nothing wrong with spiritual. This is how God wants his body, his church. God doesn't want a sick body. Think about it. It, it makes no sense, folks. It makes no sense. So, guys, I'm going to shut it down here because I can get on a rampage because I'm tired. You heard me say the other day about handicapped spots at the church, people coming at me. Guys, 
I truly, truly believe if Jesus Christ was standing there right now in a human flesh again, he would not let you come in that church with a cane and a crutch or a wheelchair. I know he wouldn't. He, he would just say, do you want to be made well? And you'd say, well, yeah. Well, then, okay. Your faith has made you well. Just let this stuff speak to you, folks. Please, please, please. It's speaking to me volumes. It's it's giving me a spiritual, a spiritual high right now. So, guys, thank you for joining me. Until tomorrow, Wednesday the 6th, enjoy the rest of your day. And I just pray that this, that this just really, really sinks in and then speaks to you guys. So until tomorrow, enjoy the rest of your day. I love you guys.